Hi, Mark Warnke here, packoats.com. Um, this video is going to, I'm putting together to help you to know how to load panniers. Now, I know it seems kind of simple, but there's actually things you need to consider, and it took me years to kind of figure out what were the problem spots and that sort of thing. So, I'm going to kind of go over that by just filling it with common camp stuff. Now, here's our set of panniers. This is that Mark Warnke Signature Series, is the one that gets small and big and can carry a lot. Um, this is the pannier that I designed because I just had problems with all the other stuff that was out there. It's all good stuff, but it just didn't meet my needs because I needed the ability to have one pannier do all things and this one does it really nicely. So remember that if you have this one or, or anyone, all these things are still gonna apply. But on this one, you always wanna make sure that the branding is to the outside. Some of them have uh, this kind of branding, other ones have patches, um, but you always wanna make sure that's to the outside the loops are always to the goat so this is the goat side this is the outside when i'm loading a pannier i'm always considering that i want soft comfortable things against the goat side and on the outside i want to make sure that i don't have any like really hard edges because you got to remember these panniers are going to be rubbing against rocks sticks brush bumping up against trees as they pass and over time, if you have a sharp edge on that lower, it's really important on the lower outside part that you don't have those sharp edges, then what will happen is that it'll begin to create abrasions and weak spots in the pannier. So we're gonna kind of load accordingly. This uh, tents very often are the ones that go on the bottom. Now, another thing to consider, if you have things that you wanna protect that are fragile, put it on your alpha, put it on your strongest goat that nobody else messes with. Because as a veteran packer or a brand new packer, it takes you about five seconds to realize that the target spot that bully goats like to hit another goat is right in the pannier. They just punch them right in the pannier. So you cannot put fragile things in one of your submissive goats, it will get crushed. So always put fragile things on your alpha or on the goats that nobody messes with. So I like to put tents on the bottom. Um, because they're long and they kind of set the stage for the pannier. You see how the, the pannier will take on the shape of what's in it. So I like a pannier myself, rather than being really wide, I'd rather have it kind of be long, skinny, and closer to the goat. When you pack it really wide, he has that much harder of a time fitting through stuff. So this tent now just set the stage of that bottom structure of the pannier. It's soft, so what it rubs against isn't gonna create an abrasion. Now then if we pull something like this, now I'm gonna to have to load this weird shaped thing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this for the top. I'm also gonna save things um, like pillows and axes and bed rolls for what I call ballasts. When I get down to the end of a pannier and I have two panniers that I'm scaling, I always try to get everything to be within a pound. So I will not let them be more than a pound off. These little things weigh like, you know, five ounces. So if I need to add to one, I keep these kind of things in reserve, set in a side pile that I can just throw in to help me balance out loads. So these are the kind of things that, that I'll always reserve for that. And they go in nicely on top. Now, so if I was to load this stuff next, I would go with another layer of soft stuff that maintains that structure of narrow and long. And the other thing that this brings up, and I, I knew this video would give me an opportunity to try to give you some helpful hints. When you bring people, tell them to bring a stuff sack uh, that their clothes are in. These individual stuff sacks, and what I always tell people is bring me lots of little packages rather than one big package. You have to stress that because they'll all bring you one big package, a giant big sleeping bag and a giant big clothes bag. So you want them to break it down in smaller packages so it'll fit on your goats better. The nice thing about a clear waterproof clothes bag is that it's waterproof and it's also clear. So now I can look at it and go, there's my sock and reach down in. If this weren't clear, then I have to pull everything out of here to get to it. So these little clear dry bags by Sea to Summit, you can find them lots of places super cheap. I love the heck out of these and I use them. So this is what I'm gonna go in with next. Another little helpful hint with sleeping bags. Remember, the more you compress a sleeping bag, the more you lessen its life. So the tighter you keep this, the longer, the more you eliminate the loft, the down inside of it. 
So for me, since we're goat packers, we have the luxury to not have this have to be super compressed. So kind of leave it. If you need to compress it, you can cinch it down, but I have a tendency to buy a little bit bigger compression sack so that I don't have to lose or lessen the life of my sleeping bag and I show up and it's got lots of loft. So then I'm gonna stack this one in side by side. Now here's where I'm gonna start coming into trouble. Now I have a very light, but yet bulky load, right? So now I'm gonna kind of do some compressing, but this is almost about the the size I'm gonna want. I don't wanna make it much bigger. So now I need heavy duty stuff on top to make this approximately a 20 to, to 25 pound load. That's usually what I shoot for, 40 to 50. I got so many goats and you know that sort of thing. I like to load them light. So what I keep all my kitchen gear in is these stupid nail boxes and if you know a Home Depot guy that buys them he's gonna have a hundred of these just like I have and they actually work pretty well the lids are kind of you fight them to get them open so this isn't a perfect solution but here's some of those rough edges that contoured edge I do not want on the bottom of a pannier because it's gonna scrape against rocks and wear on that Cordura so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right on top it's heavy though this 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 weighs like eight pounds so I'm gonna put that in there because it's got kitchen utensils and then I'm gonna load my last thing which is my 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 cookware so now I got everything in and and I actually I don't like how that fits for the purpose of this video I want you to see a well-packed pannier so I'm gonna go with oh and I get asked a lot what are the best tarps? We may try to make these someday, but honestly, I don't know if we'll ever be able to compete with the, the outright material cost. But Kelty makes one of the most affordable big tarps that your goats can go under, that your camp can go under. I have like four of these. Um, I think they're around 70 or 80 bucks, maybe 90. But in terms of tarps, they're pretty cheap. I, I put them through hell. I've only really had a goat tear up one. Um, I burn fires underneath them so they got little holes in them from the embers and stuff like that they've they've done me super well so I really suggest this is called the Kelty Noah's tarp um, so we're gonna go ahead and load that too so now we got this loaded this is a pretty big pannier this is about as big as I like volume wise and so what I'm gonna do my next rickety picnic table is I'm going to then put this velcro together now here's the beauty, a beautiful thing about our panniers. And this is a way bigger deal than you think it is until you start loading a bunch of different panniers. These scaling loops are awesome. When you have other panniers, what happens is that they, you, you're trying to fight for a place to hook to on these loops. And when you hook to it, you know, the, the, the pannier spills and stuff falls out, these little things on top, it's a total pain in the butt. So these scaling loops, not only do they hold the bag together, but it gives you a nice place. And this is the best scale that I've found. It's super cheap. It's on Amazon. It's like 10 bucks. They function really well. I still haven't broken one yet, and I've been using them for two packing seasons. So this particular scale, I have three of them because I keep a bunch around. I never want to be without one back in the back country or loading meat or any of that stuff. This particular one, I believe they're 10 bucks and this one has about a thousand trail miles on it of being thrown in and it still works I, I i haven't switched out batteries much it's not like they chew through batteries really good scale you can find them on amazon they're a, a luggage scale the other thing i like about it is it has a hook that hooks nice but also if you're trying to hook onto weird stuff it'll go through and then loop like that too so so pretty handy thing but these scaling loops um on our panniers are super handy so yeah, so this one's right at what I would load a lot of loads. This is a 20 pound load. So then I'm gonna roll this up and I like to get this nice and tight. I really like to compact these loads. So I'll take this corner down even further, pull this up, meet it, cinch that down nice and tight and then the same with the other side. So I'm gonna take that corner down and it actually really doesn't matter whether you roll towards the goat or away from the goat, but as a rule, I try to roll uh, towards the goat. I actually did it wrong on this one, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, like I said. But I, my rule is I roll towards the goat. So then we cinch down, and now this is a nice load. Now, you can see that I have all soft stuff against the goat, and I'll kind of look. See how I'm kind of bulging here? So I can kind of press this in 
when I can get this load all set up. And then what I'll do is I'll get two of these, and then once I get the two match set that's ready to go, is I will actually hook one to the other, and then we always know which are match set on the trailhead. So it's super fast and simple. Remember, load your panniers before you leave the garage. Um, once you hit the trailhead, it is so nice just to yank everything out, have it all loaded, you're gone, gone, you put it right on the goats and you're ready to rip. I do all my scaling and loading in the garage before I leave. Um, Sue's in packing the food. Um, she knows she has a certain weight. She has one of these scales. She's weighing the coolers to make sure she can load it on one goat. If she needs an extra amount of food because we're taking more people in, she'll let me know, hey, I'm going to need another half a pannier. We just kind of communicate and we have our roles. We go in almost every weekend during the summer, so it's kind of rule for us. But that will help you now to just know some of the characteristics of loading a pannier. Things like this will go on the top, right? I'll load that inside. Now let's speak also too about top loads. I've just never had good luck with top loads. I suggest you you don't plan on them, you don't try to use them. When you load a top load, all it has to do is shift a little bit on a goat. And because we're dealing with minor loads, I mean, when you have 25 pounds a side and you have a top load that's seven pounds and it shifts over this much, you just added four pounds, which is a huge percentage of weight. And now that saddle's off kilter and you're gonna deal with it. If you can avoid top loads, avoid them. I, I, I just, I don't like them. The ones that are spanning over the top, they just don't function well. But I think that's good. Um, don't forget things like first aid kits. We pack that in. Don't forget tons of cordage. I bring in so much cord. I'm like kind of like a cord dork. And the other thing is, remember stuff sacks. These are another alternative to those plastic waterproof ones. I really like the stuff sack that gives you the ability to see through. So now I can look at that in one glance from the outside without digging through it. There's my water bottle, there's my cup, there's my mixing bowl, blah, 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 there's my coffee. It just makes everything in camp easier to be able to see through and I like this mesh design as well. So I hope that helps. That's Loading Panniers, packgoats.com. Take care.